O Canada Conversations are a creation of IOM, made available under the Creative Commons 3.0 IGO. Please refer to the text of the audiobook for the copyright mark and the full legal code. Funded by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. O Canada Conversations, Dialogue Number 28. Discrimination in Canada. The following dialogue is related to Unit 1, Overview of Canada, from the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. For more information, refer to the following units of the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. 1.9. Diversity. 1.12. Discrimination in Canada. 1.13. Handling Discrimination in Canada. Ali and Sadia talk on the phone. Ali lives in Montreal, Quebec, and Sadia is in Winnipeg, Manitoba. They discuss diversity in sexual orientation, gender identity and expression, sex characteristics, and types of discrimination and how to handle it. Hello? Ali? How are you doing? It has been a while since we talked. I know. Both of us are busy with settling down. I cannot believe it has been a few months since we arrived in Canada. Time goes by so quickly. I cannot agree more. I wish we lived closer. I sometimes miss our pre-departure orientation sessions before coming to Canada. At least the time difference is only an hour, and we can catch up on the phone like this from time to time. That is true. How are things going with you in Winnipeg? Yesterday, I went to a workshop that lasted a whole day. How about you? I went to a government-funded organization for newcomers. One of the workers there answered my questions and gave me a brochure to read in my own language. I wish you could see the brochure. It was very helpful. I have been to one of those organizations before, too. I remember there was a striped flag with six different colors on the brochure. Do you know what it means? That is exactly what I asked, too. Those flags resemble rainbows. Have you ever noticed those flags on doors and in different places here in Canada? The worker said that the rainbow flag was a sign that it is a safe place for people with diverse sexual orientations, gender identities and expressions, and sex characteristics. I had never heard of those terms before. Me neither. I asked many questions. The worker was really helpful and answered all my questions. Then they gave me a brochure. That is good. I do not think I know what some of those words mean. I think I know what sex characteristics are. Is that like whether someone is male or female? Well, I am not sure I remember exactly how the worker described it. Let me read the parts about it in the brochure to you. It says here that when we are born, a sex is usually given to us based on biological markers. We are usually told by a doctor or our parents that we are male or female based on our appearance and how our bodies are formed. These are sex characteristics. It says that some people are naturally born with a mix of male and female biology. So I guess people can have male, female, or mixed sex characteristics. Wow, that is so interesting. I thought that people could only have male or female biology. But now I am a bit confused. If that is what sex characteristics are, then what is... What did you call it? Gender? Yes, gender identity. I had not heard about that one either. Okay, then what is the difference between sex characteristics and gender identity? Well, it says here that gender identity is our own sense of being female, male, both, or neither. Wait, I thought the doctor or our parents told us what our gender identity is when we are born. Isn't gender just based on how our bodies are formed and what we look like when we are born? Not necessarily. According to the information here, Our gender identity may be the same as the sex we were given when we were born, or it could be different. No one can tell us what our gender identity is. Only we know. Our understanding of our gender may change. For me, I feel like a man, so I guess my gender identity is male. 
Okay, so sex characteristics are related to how our bodies are formed, but gender identity is how we feel inside about being female or male? Or both, or neither. Did you know some people feel their gender identity is different from the sex characteristics they are born with? What do you mean? For instance, a person born with female biology may not identify themselves as a woman. I did not know people could feel that way. People of different gender identities have been living in Canada since before European settlers arrived. Some indigenous people who have a gender identity other than male or female identify as two-spirit, which also has a spiritual meaning for some indigenous people. Wow. I did not know any of that. I guess that is why they call it diversity. But I think I understand the concept better now. What were some of those other terms and what do they mean? Gender expression is another one. I think I may know this one. Does it refer to how we express or present our gender identity? In my culture, certain clothing, colors, and patterns are usually associated with women. So wearing those colors or patterns would be a way for a woman like me to express my gender identity? Yeah, that is pretty much what it says here. Gender expression can include our choice of clothing, hairstyle, makeup, body language, voice, and behavior. The name we use and our pronouns are also two common ways we express our gender. Okay, that one is easier for me to understand because it is something I can see or hear. I have seen people with gender expressions that are masculine, feminine, a mix, or something else. We all express our gender in different ways. Also, I am guessing the ways that we express our gender may change over time. Since I no longer dress the way I did when I was younger, now that I am an adult, is gender expression similar in that way? Yeah. It says that in the brochure too. For someone who said that she did not know much about this topic, you know more than me on this one. Both of us are trying our best to learn new things. By the way, did you feel comfortable asking all those questions to the workers? After the worker told me that government-funded organizations, like the one I went to, must protect my privacy, and that they are required to get my permission before they share information about me with other people, I felt like I could trust the worker enough to share some of my concerns and challenges. What did you ask them about? I had some questions related to sexual orientation. Okay, that is a new term for me. What does sexual orientation mean? Well, everyone has a sexual orientation. According to the brochure, our sexual orientation is based on our physical, romantic, and emotional attraction to another person. We can be attracted to a person of a different gender, the same gender, to more than one gender, or to no gender at all. Why did you want to talk about sexual orientation in particular? Uh, can you promise that this stays between us? Of course. See, being a man in my culture, it was expected that I would be attracted to and eventually marry a woman. As time went on, my understanding of my sexual orientation changed. And, well, I do not feel attracted toward women. This made me feel different and scared because if I told anyone how I felt, it would have put me in danger. Wow, that sounds like a difficult experience. Thanks for sharing your story with me. Were you able to ask the questions you wanted to at the settlement organization? Thankfully, yes. Talking to the worker and to you now has helped me feel a lot better. At the government-funded organization, the worker said that in Canada, there are legal protections for people who have diverse sex characteristics, gender identities, gender expressions, and sexual orientations. That is great. I am glad you can be who you are in Canada. I know. People have the right to express their sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression in the way that they choose. People like me are free to love whoever they want to love, and marriage is a right for everyone. 
Also, I learned that if a person wants to legally change their gender identity, they can. Canadian passports and identity documents allow people to choose male, female, or another gender. But I have also heard that there is still unequal treatment or discrimination in Canada. One time in a store, a stranger shouted at two women who were holding hands that they were shameless. That is terrible that they were discriminated against just for who they love. That is why I am still hesitant to share my sexual orientation with many people. There is no rush. You can tell other people whenever you feel comfortable. And I am glad you were able to talk to me. You are right. Your story about the couple in the store reminds me of the time that I was discriminated against based on my nationality. I was walking through a grocery store when someone came up to me for no reason and told me to go back to where I came from. Wow, that is terrible. I am sorry to hear that you experienced that. I have had experiences like that as well. Yeah, it sometimes happens. You remember the workshop I mentioned earlier? The one I went to last week? We talked a lot about the different types of discrimination that people can face. That sounds interesting. They said that despite Canada being a multicultural and accepting society, one in five people in Canada has experienced discrimination. It can be based on race and ethnicity, gender, disability, where you come from, or sexual orientation. Sometimes discrimination is easy to recognize in the case of shouting and other verbal abuse, but other times it is more hidden, like subtle slights or insults. That is true. I have experienced that, too. For example, someone treating you as not smart enough because of your accent, or someone thinking that you may steal something because you have a certain skin color, or dress a certain way, or being treated unfairly when accessing services. Sometimes the insults are so small and subtle that we may not even recognize it at first. Yeah. Just last week, I had a friend who told me she was mistaken for a waitress at a restaurant. She was not even wearing a uniform. It was only after she stepped away from the situation that she realized their comments were likely based on her race and gender and were a type of discrimination. I also read a news article about a teenage girl who wears a hijab and wanted to play sports at school. But she was told that she cannot play because the team did not allow players to cover their heads. She wrote down the details, and her parents reported it to the school board. What happened after that? The school board discussed it and determined that this was a form of religious discrimination. In the end, she was able to play wearing her hijab and was voted the best new player on the team that year. That is good! But there are still so many instances of discrimination like this out there. What other types of discrimination did you learn about in the workshop? I learned about discrimination that is based on disability. For example, if someone who uses crutches wants to visit a government services office on the second floor of a building, but there is no elevator, then that is a form of discrimination. I did not realize that was a form of discrimination. Mm-hmm. We also learned about discrimination based on gender. Like if a woman was denied a job doing construction work simply because she is a woman. It is a good thing that the Canadian law protects people's rights in these cases, especially when it comes to job hiring practices or harassment in the workplace. Did they teach you the strategies to handle these types of situations? Yes, they did. Like calling 911? That is one option. But calling 911 is only if you are in a situation when you are possibly in danger. You can also call the local police's non-emergency phone number for guidance. Violent acts of discrimination are not common in Canada, but if it does happen, that is a serious violation of the law. I see. I did not know I can call the police for that. The workshop advised us to write down any details of what happened during the incident. The date, time and place, and names of anyone involved. That way, we can see if there is a pattern of discriminatory behavior, just like the girl in the news article I told you about. That is a good tip. I should keep that in mind. And if we experience any discrimination at work, 
They told us to check if our employer has an anti-harassment policy and then follow the procedures. I have not thought about discrimination at work. It is good that we can report it. In Canada, we have the right to respectfully question procedures or practices that we may feel are discriminatory. Other than that, we can have conversations with a mental health care professional or people we trust to help us heal after these discriminatory incidents. It is important to seek help when we have been discriminated against. And just because someone makes mean comments about us, telling us that we are not good enough or not deserving because of who we are or how we look, that does not mean that we should believe them. That is a good way of looking at it. This workshop sounds great. Yes, the workshop taught me a lot. It helped me see that everyone here has their differences, so we should all be tolerant and respectful towards others, regardless of how different that they may be from us. Great. I think I should consider signing up for a workshop like that. You should. It is important to make sure the words we say and how we act are always respectful to all people's right to live as they wish, even if it differs from the way we live, and to promote the fair treatment of all people without exception. Canada is a country that values and respects diversity. Indeed. Exactly. We should not treat others negatively because of who they are. We have to be mindful of being tolerant and respectful of others. It is nice talking to you and catching up. I think I have to head out soon. Likewise, take care. End of dialogue unit.